Hello and welcome to this uh, new review. It's of the latest uh, offering from Hornby. Uh, it's the Princess Coronation class which was built by the LMS and this example that I've got is the Duchess of Athol. So uh, what I think I'm going to do is get right into the detail, show you the locomotive because it is absolutely stunning and uh, obviously I'll show you um, all the details tell you my thoughts, tell you whether you should go and buy one and obviously I'll throw in some running shots for you as well. So uh, this is going to be a big video, I hope you enjoy, let's get into it. So uh, like I've said this is the uh, latest rele release of the Princess Coronation class or the Duchess as some people like to call them. Uh, this is Duchess of Athol in the LMS Crimson livery with obviously LMS on the tender and LMS running number without the smoke deflectors but I'll go all into that when I uh, get to it. Um, this model is literally, it came out on Friday, uh, I bought it on the Saturday from my local model shop and uh, today's Monday and I've just fell in love with it. I just, I've been watching these online, uh, they've, the Sir William Stania has completely sold out on pre-order, so uh, obviously I couldn't get one so I've had to get this one, but never mind. Um, these are extremely popular uh, and I'm going to show you why. Uh, so I think what we should do first is uh, I'll quickly show you the box and uh, give you some information on the locomotive. So uh, a quick look at the box and obviously it's a typical Hornby box. You've got the uh, uh, photo of the model on the front, you've got the uh, roof and obviously you've got the top of the model on the front, on the top. Uh, it's a typical packaging so if you slide it out you've got your ice cube in the uh, in the red part of the box obviously I've took the model out because obviously you've seen it on the track and obviously if we pull it out if I chuck that to one side I'll show you the uh, the bag of goodies that you get which is you get quite a lot actually you get a, uh, a flanged wheel well axle with two wheels now that's because when you take the model out of the box uh, the wheel underneath the cab is actually flangeless, so obviously that allows it to go around tight turns. Um, if you obviously wanted to uh, put that on, obviously you could swap it and then you'd have the flange. But especially if you've got um, like just set track points like I do, you're best off to have the f the flangeless because then the wheels can uh, it can override and it can actually run off the rail and then it pulls itself back on as it straightens itself up. But it's nice Hornby of giving you that. That's obviously if you want to make it look proper dead realistic. You've got the brake rods. You've got some brass uh, piping. You've got look at that. You've even got a spare pair of. Um, I don't know if the camera's picking this up. It probably isn't. No, sadly not. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but uh, I'll, I'll make it quick. You've got a spare pair of steps, and they're even painted. You've even got the gold lining on them. You've got uh, a coupler. Yeah, um, yeah, that's about it, really. Nice little bag of goodies, but uh, I'll I just leave them in there. I do. You've got the. Um, you've got the uh, obviously the Hornby usual instructions obviously how to take the body off how to decoder it um, if anyone is going to DCC this locomotive uh, like I have uh, you uh, undo the front of the tender screw it there's I think two screws if I remember on the front of the tender and then uh, you think that could you try and pull the tender off like you do on most Hornby models and oh, I've knocked over me me things yeah you uh, you just think it lifts away like on the Hornby Black 5 you literally unscrew it and it just pops off but there's two clips right on the back don't force them you put you literally so let's say that's it you undo the two screws there you lift it up from this end and there's two screws that fit into the chassis and you have to wriggle them out 
it took a little bit of force and I felt like I was going to break it. So I will warn you, be careful. Uh, and then obviously once you've wriggled it, then you can pull it off and it pulls straight out. There is a screw underneath the coupling. I removed the coupling to unscrew it because I didn't read the instructions. You don't need to. So uh, quick heads up for you there. Obviously this model is, as you can see, DCC ready. Uh, takes the uh, usual... Hornby 8, well any 8 pin chip, I've just put Hornby 8 pin chip in because I had one lying about. Um, it's a bit jerky between the speed steps but it's an absolute brilliant runner. You can put, I run it on speed setting 15 and obviously as you've seen that's the speed that it runs around the layout, it does really well. So um, yeah, there we so, go. Yeah, just to uh, clarify, the uh, pony truck underneath the uh, the cab, I don't know if you can see that, but there's no flange holding that. So obviously, as it goes round quite a tight turn, obviously you've got your flanges on your driving wheel and on the pony truck on the front. And it allows it to do that, so when it goes over a point, nothing's holding it. So I don't know if you can see, if you watch the wheel, it gives it, see how much movement it's got. Because if you look, the driving wheels now are on the flanges, but the cab can just keep going. Obviously that allows it to go around tight turns. So uh, there's just a, a thought that I'd, I'd mention for you. Quick bit of history on the loco for you. This is obviously 6231 rather, Duchess of Athol, and she was built at Crewe, obviously in this condition, without the streamlining, back in 1938, July 2nd, 19... no, tell a lie. She entered traffic at Camden, in London uh, on July 2nd 1938. Transferring to Polym Polmady Polm Polymide, don't know how you say that, sorry. I think that's up Scotland on January 6, 1940, where it spent the rest of its working life. Moved to storage in August 1962, and then she was withdrawn uh, December 1962. So obviously she would have faced the torch probably 93, maybe 94. Um, she's not preserved. There's three preserved, uh, well, princess coronations. Uh, there's the Duchess of Hamilton, Duchess of Sutherland, and the city of Birmingham. I believe the Duchess of Hamilton is in, in the NRM at York, and that's the only one to retain the streamlining. It didn't have it, but I think probably about ten years ago, I think they actually put it back on, which uh, that that loco is worth a visit. I personally think they look so much, they look a lot more classier without it. So um, I just I just love it like this, I do. So there's a quick bit of history for you. So uh, if we bring her back in now, uh, obviously you can just see how gorgeous this locomotive is. I'll start with the livery because I think that's the first thing that takes your uh, takes your breath away. This is the uh, LMS C uh, Crimson Lake livery, a uh, bit different to the uh, maroon. Obviously, that was BR. Uh, the Crimson, I think, was a bit lighter, if I do recall. Obviously, comment if I'm wrong. Uh, I should have done my research before this video, but uh, I just wanted to get it out there because obviously I'm just so in love with this model. Um, if I start, if I take the uh, camera freehand, so obviously, here's the locomotive. Like I've said, it's in the LMS Crimson Lake livery. So if we start from the front, we're still on the tripod, I'm just freehanding, so apologies. So obviously, as you can see, we've got the smoke box, um, and on the front, we've got the uh, number 6231 in the uh, LMS uh, writing. Obviously this one is before they put the streamlining on, so obviously you don't have the uh, streamlining sticking out. Uh, on the Duchess, uh, no, the uh, Sir William Stanier, which is the uh, sold out version, that has got the um, smoke deflectors and it's in the BR livery. As we uh, work our way along you can see the cylinders and you can see they've really gone to town on them you can see the riveting on the plate on the side it's in the maroon it's got the gold uh, lining on the side it's got the silver on the sides of the cylinders the William Stanier one doesn't have that so obviously that really does bring you in onto this model 
obviously you can see the uh, all the extra detail you can see the uh, silver painted handrail on the uh, door on the front you can see it running down the side you can see the uh, silver door dart on the front you can see the silver uh, grab rail there and the uh, silver lamp hooks they're all separately applied um, they're all you could literally just uh, touch them they're um, they're all yeah like I said they're all separately applied they're all painted they're all correct they all they're all 3d they all stick out you really notice it when you look at the model uh, if I I don't know if I can I'll try and get you a better view of the front so if I back her up turn the camera that might be a bit better so if we do that zoom out a bit okay. Obviously, as you can see, you can see all the rivets on the front. Um, if you, if we work our way along the side, you can just see. Look at the nameplate, and you can see all the detail underneath. Look at all that. It really does strike you on this loco. You can see the uh, silver handrail running above the uh, nameplate. Runs all the way down. Uh, obviously this is a 4, 6, uh, 2 wheel arrangement on the uh, Coronation class. Extremely successful locomotive built for um, passenger express work on the, uh, on the West Coast main line. Um, they were absolutely brilliant at what they did. They were hugely powerful. They were huge machines. Even if you uh, compare this to uh, a Black 5, you can really see the size difference. I have actually got the Black 5, so I'll put that alongside in a little bit. And then uh, you can see that as well. So if, I, uh, if we zoom in and just look at the detail. Roller forward. Even look at the side of the cab, the rivets, you can see the uh, copper piping underneath the cab. You can even see the pony truck underneath the uh, the cab. There's uh, the handrails on the tender and on the uh, side of the cab as well. You can see in the tender the coal loads coming out so uh, the fireman can stoke the fire. Literally, there's we've not seen model uh, detail on models like this in such a long... Well, I don't think I've ever seen it before. Hornby really have pushed the boat out on this. Um, if I keep going forward, obviously you can see the tender, LMS, you can see the handrail on the back, you can see the lined paintwork uh, on the underneath by where the uh, wheels are. If I back it up, oh, I don't know what that noise was. If I uh, to take the camera off the uh, tripod, then uh, I'll give you a better look. As you can see, you can see in the cab, look at all that detailing. Please excuse the, uh, the shaky hand, I'm trying to hold my phone and the uh, obviously I've got it for the flashlight. But as you can see, you can see in the cab, you can see all the detail. Look at that. And then look down the side, you can obviously see all the, uh, the brass pipes underneath the cab as we work our way down behind the signal. Look at that detail under the nameplate if it focuses. There you go, look at that. It looks just like the real thing. Look at the cylinders, look at that. It's beautiful. I don't think I need to go in any detail. I don't even need to explain anything. I think all I need to do is just say, look, because it really does. As soon as I saw this model, I said, right, I'm buying it. <laughs> the, I know that it retails at, uh, well, I think you can pick these up for about £160, £170. Uh, I paid £162 for this one. Um, if you pre-ordered it, you would have paid £150. But uh, I just wanted to see it in the flesh. As soon as I saw it, had to buy it. So, uh, what do you think of that? And if I work my way around the front with the flashlight... That. All it needs now is a few lamps and you'd be absolutely set. Obviously uh, you've got the details that uh, you can put on the uh, buffer beam and uh, obviously I've shown you all the, uh, the details. I wouldn't like to think what it'd look like with all the details, it'd just be like wow.
but then I'd, I'd be scared to run it in case I broke anything. But uh, it's an absolute workhorse. I've had to move the tender off the track just so I could see in the cab. So uh, there we go. Just a quick look on top, and obviously we've got the whistle just in front of the cab. Uh, we've got the um, safety valves, the four of them. Nicely streamlined in there. Well done to uh, Stania of LMS. Nicely done. We've got a full coal tender load, which um, in pictures I, I thought it looked a bit silly, but in real life, yeah, I like it. I like it. I might not have to put a real coal load on it. Obviously, it'd improve it, but it's not half bad. And then obviously, you've got the uh, chimney on the front. It's the uh, single chimney on, on here, on the uh, model of Sir William Stanier. I believe it's the uh, double chimney. Just to uh, put the size of the Duchess uh, in comparison, I thought I'd uh, pull up the Hornby Black 5, which is on the left. Take no notice of the local on the right, that's LNER. And uh, sadly, uh, she's not being included today. So. There we go, about that. Yeah, um, so obviously I'm going to show you the size of the... Uh, Black 5, it is a uh, 460 arrangement, the Duchess is a 462, but you really will see the size difference. And this is a good comparison actually of how Hornby have uh, really pulled this model out of the bag. You will really see how good it is. So obviously you can see the front, look at the de look at the livery straight away. The Black 5 looks a bit dull on the front, looks matte. Um, it looks, looks pretty dull as well, the Black 5. But then you look at the Duchess and wow, you know, look at look at the detail on the door, you know. So if we work our way round the side, I'm going to be freehanding again now. So obviously both locos are sitting in the same position. They're both. Oh, there if I can show you. Oh, we might be able to. Two uh, four six zero oh, for the black five and 462 for the Duchess. You can see straight away there, look how far the cab's further back. Much bigger boiler on uh, the Duchess. Obviously the Black 5 was a uh, mixed freight passenger engine, so obviously uh, it could go on branch lines as well. It could do passenger work, it could do freight work. The Black 5s were renowned for doing absolutely anything and everything. They were a go anywhere locomotive. The Duchess was obviously built for high speed passenger work. You wouldn't have seen her tootling about on a branch line with a couple of wagons. She was never built for that. But obviously you can see that. Look at look at the size of a boiler. Compare the two, you can just see them. And look at look at the extra detail as well on the uh, on the Duchess compared to the uh, Black 5. I think this really does show, it does put it into perspective. Obviously look at look at in the, oh, I don't know if you can see, if you look in the cab of the Black 5, this is a super detailed Black 5 I may add. You, there is cab detail in there, I don't think you can see it, but you, you're not missing much. I've shown, uh, obviously you'll, you'll see in the uh, Duchess's cab and look at the tender, look at the back of the tenders, just look at the detail. So you can just obviously uh, they're Stanier tenders, but look how Hornby have really they've upped the game. You know, obviously look how far it sits further back the Duchess. So there's a comparison. Both Stanier design locomotives, the Black Five, and the Duchess. So uh, I think that was quite a uh, useful uh, useful comparison of uh, of the two locos and the two models. Oh no, what am I doing? Oh, I'm going to get myself too excited here. So uh, what I've, put, I've brought in now is a Southern locomotive. This is the Merchant Navy class, again by Hornby. This was built as an express passenger locomotive for the Southern region. This one is Lamport and Holt line, uh, running number 35026 with its British Rail running number. Uh, obviously, like I said, this is another Hornby locomotive. This is a few years old, super detailed, but uh, again, we'll uh, quickly go over it because I'm enjoying this. So, oh, the Black Five's still there. So this is gonna, this will make it even more fun. Three-way comparison. Straight away, who wins for the chimney? Southern. Look at that big bad boy there. Uh, it's got the smoke deflectors on. 
obviously uh, if you if I'd was lucky enough to pre-order Sir William Stanier I would have had the smoke deflectors a little bit annoyed that I didn't get them but now it's just like no I'm happy with the Duchess of Athol um, as you can see the size of the uh, Southern very similar to the size of the Duchess obviously this is an express passenger locomotive the biggest boiler that would have run on BR so a bit bigger uh, maybe a bit more powerful than the uh, the Duchess you can obviously see the uh, bullied tender there compared to the Stania it was a uh, form over function definitely for bullied um, but look at the LMS look at the livery as well the ho the Hornby uh, Southern um, well the BR Green rather look at it it's just dull it looks it looks more toy like but look at the gloss look at the shine on the Duchess you know just look look at the difference you know and pull these it's third in and I'm pretty sure the loco that you're looking at is the Duchess you know I just you know I just want to make the fact that I'm blown away and if you get one then you'll be blown away as well I know it's £162 but by god it's definitely worth it so most I've spent on a steam locomotive but yeah I'm definitely definitely glad I've got it